Man, this M64 looks like smeared ass on modern TVs. Ugh, I wish there was an easy way to fix that. What the what? What the hell was that for? What? What about my destroyed M64 problem? Welcome back to the Video Game OR, the series where we show you the process in repairing and restoring all things gaming. Today we'll be addressing one of the biggest faults of the N64, that being the video output quality. To remedy this, we'll be enabling RGB video on the console. So without any further ado, let's begin the procedure. To add RGB functionality to the N64, we'll need to install a mod chip. This process isn't solderless, so some experience is recommended. I'll have links to the mod chip and the tools used in the description for your convenience. First things first, we'll need to check to see if the console is compatible with the mod chip. To do this, look at the series number located on the underside of the console. If it starts with NS1, then the console is compatible with this mod chip and you can proceed with the installation. Once the compatibility has been noted, you'll need to use a 4.5mm game bit screwdriver to remove the six screws located on the bottom of the console. With the screws removed, be sure to keep them someplace safe so as to not lose them during the procedure. Then using a standard screwdriver, remove the jumper or expansion pack and take out the top half of the console shell. With the top shell out of the way, you're now face to face with the minefield of screws holding the N64 together. You'll need to remove all screws lining the perimeter of the motherboard in addition to the ones in the cartridge and expansion base slots. Then be sure to store these safely with the case screws. Once the screws are removed, you should be able to separate the motherboard from the bottom half of the shell. With the board removed, we can now move on to the mod chip installation. But first, let's see the featured comment. This video's featured comment is brought to you by Eddie James, who said, 29 seconds in, I'm laughing my ass off. Thanks for your comment, Eddie. If you're new to the OR, be sure to subscribe and say a few words down below for a chance to have your comment featured in a future episode of Video Game OR. Now, back to the tutorial. With the mainboard removed, take the RF shielding off of the bottom. Then shift your attention to the video out at the back of the board, located here. Your mod chip should lay quite nicely on the pins for the video out. From here, apply a little bit of flux, then solder the seven legs to each of the vias on your mod chip. Congratulations, you're now halfway through the installation. Next, apply some flux and solder to the R, G, B, and S pads on your chip. Then flux and tin the vias next to R8, R9, and R10 on the motherboard, as we'll be running some jumper wires from the pads on the mod chip to these vias. With the points tin, take some strands of ribbon cable and run them from the vias to the pads on the mod chip. R8 should be connected to pad R, R9 to pad G, and R10 to pad B. If this area is populated with resistors on your board, then your installation is complete. However, if you're missing resistors here, you'll need to run a jumper wire from the R16 via to the S pad on the chip. When doing so, make sure that the jumper is no longer than 3 centimeters or 1 and 1 18th of an inch. Once the installation has been completed, we'll need to bend over one of the tabs on the RF shield to avoid any contact with the mod chip. Be sure to attach the RF shield to verify that everything is clear of the chip, at which point check that the console is working correctly. If so, we can move on to the reassembly. You'll want to attach the little guard for the video out and drop the motherboard back into the bottom half of the shell. Then secure it down with the overabundance of screws Nintendo so graciously provided us. Once the minefield of screws are intact, place the top shell back on and secure it in place with the game bit screws. Then simply plug in your jumper or expansion pack and your N64 has now been successfully RGB modded. When using component cables, the quality difference between the stock video out options and RGB is astounding. This is the best option for use with component CRTs and works wonderfully with upscalers, providing you with the highest quality and most affordable video output option your N64 is capable of. So if you enjoyed, remember to leave a like and subscribe so that you don't miss anything new from the video game OR. Also, feel free to leave a comment on what you want to see covered for a chance for it to be featured in the next episode. And with that, I'll see you guys in the next one.